This is Geometry, Chapter 10, Section 2, in which we will be studying measuring angles and arcs. When we talk about a central angle for a circle, we're talking about an angle that has the vertex at the center. And then the two sides of the angle contain radii of the circle. CA and CB are both radii. Angle C would be called a central angle. It's an angle at the center. Now there's a really nice property about central angles. All the central angles around the center add up to 360. And we throw in this part about non-overlapping so you don't try to claim this bigger angle plus each of the parts. Okay, common sense here. Everything going around the circle adds up to 360. So if we were given this picture, our job would be to find x. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 angles, so those 4 added together equal 360. One of the tricks is to remember that this means it's a right angle, so it's 90. Hopefully that's not too complicated for you. And then we'll combine those terms together and get 215. And then subtract 215 over. And we find out that our remaining angle is 145. An arc, so we're going to talk about central angles and arcs. An arc is just part of a circle. Okay. When we get a central angle, we get two different arcs. We get this interior, this smaller one, called a minor arc, and we get the bigger one called a major arc. Okay, the minor one is the smaller of the two. The major arc is the longer of the two. And we measure arcs in degrees just like we do angles. In fact, you've already known this because I could have asked any of you how many degrees are in a circle, and you would have said 360. Okay, that's measuring it in degrees just like we do angles. And a really nice property about central angles, the central angle is equal to the arc. One of the rules of arcs is a minor arc is always going to be less than 180. A major arc is always going to be more than 180. And if it's equal to 180, we call it a semicircle, a half of a circle. Okay. Smaller than 180 is a minor arc, bigger than 180 is a major arc, equal to 180 is a semicircle. The way you name arcs, when it's a minor arc, we name it by the endpoints. So this minor arc here would be arc AB or arc BA. Okay. AB or BA. And notice the arc symbol. It looks a little bit, if you get sloppy with your... Uh, writing it can look a little bit like a segment mark so be careful it's like a parenthesis or I had a student once say it it's kinda of like a rainbow over the top okay if we need to name a major arc or if we need to name a semicircle then you name the two endpoints and you name some other point going around so ADB or BDA all right. You name the two ends and something that you pass through. Typically, not 100% of the time, but typically a minor arc is only going to have two letters and a major is going to have three. Occasionally you'll run into a minor arc with three letters if we weren't sure to start with if it was going to be major or minor and we wanted to emphasize which way we were going around the circle. You might, in those cases, see three letters for a minor. But typically, three letters is a tip-off that is major. Two letters is a tip-off that is minor.
if arcs have the same degree measure, then they're congruent, provided they're in the same circle or they're in congruent circles. Okay. A 40 degree arc on the right hand side of the circle is going to be the same size as a 40 degree arc on the left hand side of the circle. And our very first theorem of the chapter, yes, that's right, proofs are going to rear their ugly heads here in a little bit. Not today, but soon. If we have the same circle, or if we have congruent circles, cover both bases, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their central angles are congruent. What this is telling me is if I know angle 1 is equal to angle 2, then I know arc FG is going to be congruent to arc HJ. And vice versa. If I know the two arcs are equal, then I know the two angles are equal. <clears throat> now, a lot of times you'll see this idea used in circle graphs. Because we like to use percentages and show them as representing a piece of the pie, as it were. Okay. P-I-E, not P-I. A little math joke there. Just some humor. So let's say a circle graph shows us 22%. It says 22% of people like this brand better, or some such. Then the measure of that arc is 22% of the circle. So 22% times 360, 79.2 degrees. So they're going to throw some of that at you. Nothing to freak out over there. Okay. Adjacent arcs are arcs that are next to each other. They share an endpoint and nothing else. So AB and BC would be adjacent arcs. Okay. They don't have any other points in common other than B. That's the only point along this arc that's in the same, that matches, I should say, a point in this arc. And just like we had with segment addition postulate back in the day, and just like we did with angle addition po uh, postulate, now we have the arc addition postulate. Okay. See here, I was talking earlier that if you get a little bit sloppy with your notation, that can almost start looking like a segment. Yeah, it kind of almost happened to me there. But what this postulate is telling me is this bigger arc from A to C will be the same as this part plus this part. Okay. By now that should be a kind of a familiar idea. So we're going to do a couple of problems here where we're working with the arc addition postulate. Okay. They tell me that I'm looking at a couple of diameters. AC and BE are diameters. I know I have a right angle and I know I have a 63 degree angle. My job is to find how big is arc CE. Okay. Before I can figure out arc CE, I need to know how much this little angle is. Well, if I have a semicircle, I have a diameter, that tells me I've got half of the circle. 180 minus 63 minus 90 would leave this angle. Or, more to the point, 180 minus the 63 would leave this arc as 117. I could then subtract 90 and figure out that this little piece is 27, which is where I was headed the first time. Okay. What if we want arc ABD? This whole big arc. 
Well, that would be 360 minus this part. So 360 minus the 63 that's here, minus this 90, which leaves us 207. One more idea we need to look at is the idea of arc length. Arc length is just the distance between the two endpoints going along the circle. Okay. We're not talking about the straight distance from A to B. We're talking about going around the circle, like if we had to run around a track. Okay. You can't cut the corner. And the easiest way to find arc length is to use a proportion, or use a couple of ratios here. Okay. There are formulas that will do it, but most people have found over time that ratios work better for them. So arc length over circumference, what part of the whole circle would equal the angle over 360, a part of the whole circle? Okay. In symbols, L for arc length, 2 pi r for circumference, x for the angle, and 360. Let's see, can we find the length of arc AB? Okay. We have our trusty formula that we're going to plug values into. We know the radius is 3, and we know the angle is 80. A little cross multiplying, 360 times L equals 80 times 2 times pi times 3, all cleans up to this. Again, remember you might have a little bit of a different answer if you just use 3.14. Then we divide by 360 and we get our arc length. So the distance from A around to B here is 4.189, whatever this radius was measured in, feet, yards, miles, whatever. So a little bit with angles and arcs here, a little uh, arc addition idea, and then some arc length. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you uh, wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.